explained our veer offense and the do's and don'ts of it, why we run the veer offense, and, and kind of what our philosophy about the offense is. Uh, in this particular video, we'd like to explain and get into a little more detail on fundamentals that we use with offensive linemen, offensive backs, and quarterbacks, and trying to give you an explanation of what things we're trying to accomplish with each of these uh, different groups of people and, and what we do with our uh, offense and workouts and such what things we'll, uh, we'll try to accomplish with each, uh, each particular fundamental that we're teaching and each uh, blocking scheme that we're trying to, uh, to work on as well. I think uh, a good place to start on the video is kind of just a quick uh, review of what we have done in the past on, uh, on our beer offensive tape, and that was to kind of explain to you what we did is, well, of course, we're entirely a zone blocking scheme. Uh, football team offensively, and uh, everything we do is off zone blocking, and and then we have our variations with what we're trying to accomplish, uh, what we're trying to accomplish uh, a movement with our defense, or we're wanting to just cut off pursuit with them, or using a combination of both things. And that's what we'd like to begin with here, is trying to start with offensive line play and then work our way back to the backfield and the quarterbacks. Uh, our situation here in the beginning, we would uh, remind you that our blocking schemes as such will be divided into two different uh, or three different areas as far as uh, offensive scheme is concerned and of course uh, our first thing and we'll just kind of make notes here for you as we go along is our dive package in the dive package then we want to accomplish movement all right we feel like that we must, must make good movement out of, out of the uh, down people and uh on defense and we primarily we turn our linebackers loose at times on those things so dive in the dive play series and we're going to try to to make sure that we get movement our uh, the opposite of that would be our option series which is basically an outside option and our job there as offensive linemen will be to cut off pursuit and that's the sole purpose of that there's very little concern about the uh, down linemen we hope that we get out quick enough that uh, if we take our correct steps and stuff, that those down linemen will not bother us in our scheme of, of uh, operating the veer offense and taking the ball outside on an option play. Option to us means that we take the ball outside. Our uh, other grouping that we would work would be off our veer package, and that works as uh, anything that we consider to be outside veer or inside veer. We're primarily outside veer and counter dive football team, uh, but the veer is a very, uh, as you realize, a very hopefully a very uh, simple offense to run, yet it's very diversified in what we're trying to accomplish too. So in the Veer offense, we're going to need some movement at the point of attack, but we must couple that with pursuit as well. We must cut off linebackers and try to get those people to uh, to slow them down in uh, the use of the Veer offense and uh, trying to get the uh, the uh, the reads that we need at times and on that as well. Our individual techniques, I think, would be the next thing that we'd want to try to do. And what we're try, going to try to do is explain each one of these particular areas to you and then go back and give you an idea of what that kind of looks like and what we're trying to teach by using uh, some video of our youngsters in practice. Uh, just to be two or three plays of each one to kind of give you an idea of what we're trying to accomplish. But hopefully that would be uh, would solve some problems for you and, and, and us uh, understanding just exactly what we're trying to tell you here but just drawing on the board uh, if we're going to look at things that we're trying to do because we, we talked about we're basically a zone uh, blocking schemed offense and we're going to work a zone step and we can accomplish that if we were had our front up here as as uh, in a say in a 50 look and we wanted to our play was in this direction then our zone steps everybody would be zone stepping in this direction and there are certain defenses that we would want to do that with uh, that doesn't happen very often but a lot of times on our gap defenses people they're just solely filling the gaps defensively and, and put, trying to put a lot of pressure on us then we may go to an entire zone step and that's all we won't be anything else but zone step involved with it we sometimes will even go to the point of even just down blocking uh, down blocking hard and then trying to work our head upfield and uh, getting some movement upfield there and it's almost man-on-man -man blocking but it's a still a zone technique type of situation the, the, the zone step that we teach is just simply that if we set our feet here and if we're going we're gonna align our feet with a slight 
variation. We can't uh, offset our feet very much, and it, like in a pass blocking stance or something, or sprinter stance, we want our feet pretty close to parallel. And uh, maybe end step to toe, like uh, probably a great deal of you teach. Then our zone step is going to be in the direction of the play, and that would include uh, a short step with your lead foot, then squaring up here with the back foot, and then of course we're working in the direction, we're going to step in the direction of the play, and then we're working upfield. Uh, that's very difficult for our youngsters to understand sometimes because they were used to a, a man blocking scheme. And if we told our people that, uh, that we had a zone step on this guard and there was a linebacker there or what have you, and we zone stepped to that backer and he was gone and we tried not to chase him, that's very difficult to do. We wanted to continue on and, and he was going to occupy that particular zone and let someone else handle that man and run out. Same thing would be true, and we'll try to give you an example of this on, uh, on tape of what we're trying to accomplish here. If you had a two technique, maybe there was on an inside stamp going to uh, A gap, and we got a zone step here, then this guard's not responsible for that man. We'd have to have the responsibility to lie on the center then in that respect. So those are things in the zone step. It's a very simple principle, but one that we must drill over and over and over until we get our youngsters to feel like that they're protecting a zone on the football field and they're not protecting uh, against that particular defensive man that we would, that we would think about uh, seeing part of the time. All right, now that's a very difficult thing. In the same direction, if we're going in this particular direction, if we want our offensive play to go to, uh, to our left here, all right, then we're gonna zone step in that direction. And that is not a flat step now. It's, if you had to give an angle to it, then we'd talk about maybe a 45 degree angle. All right, on that, and, and hopefully you get that short step there, and you got to remember now that you're not sitting and waiting. You're taking that first step, and then you're working upfield very hard. Uh, hopefully on the tapes that we'll show you here in practice, our youngsters working, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll have those people down good and low, and we're gonna block low. We don't feel like we can do a good job at all by blocking up in the shoulder pads. We must get down in their legs to be able to accomplish anything. So the zone step is a principle that's our major principle, the things that we must do uh, offensively is do a great job of zone blocking and using uh, the uh, zone step is the first, uh, the first thing to that. And uh, the first step that you must teach, and you must teach it very strongly and make sure that, uh, that your people understand what they're trying to do. Uh, our uh, examples of that sometimes, we'll have people that are in one techniques if we were sitting in here with some type of uh, what uh, we use terminology there, say a, uh, a tight six, tight tackle six, where you got the backer sitting in here and an end sitting out. You know, and our people here, we got a zone step, we can get to that man. You got to be able to get to him, all right? And the same thing here, we're gonna zone step, protecting this gap on the slant, if he were coming inside or this linebacker coming, whatever it might be but we've got to be able to zone step and take that. If this man's playing a five technique, then we zone step and we ought to wreck up with him and lock up and working ourselves upfield. Again, the major emphasis here is the quick zone step and then upfield. You must work upfield. We're attacking uh, the defense and you don't want to let your youngster sit back and, and, uh, and take that one step and kind of squat in a hole. That's the first thing that we, we found in trying to teach the zone step that sometimes that's your tendency to do that. Uh, we'd like to take uh, maybe very quickly and show you on video what it's going to look like, uh, what we want to teach our zone step people to do here and what we're trying to accomplish and uh, we'll show you the video and maybe uh, correct as we go and, and tell you what maybe some of our youngsters are doing wrong at the time too. Look like on zone step right here, this is of course working to offensive man's right, he'll take that step and then working his head immediately upfield. Let's show him to the left and then the same situation there. I'm going to show you what it looks like if we get a little slant out, of like a two technique slanting in here. What we do is a zone step situation here. And uh, again, you're blocking your area, the center zone stepping as well as uh, the guard here. We get that slant across, and you'd have to pick him up with the center. Go some action here on. Uh, on some plays as well, and many of our kids inside are just having to zone step against this particular defensive front. And you'll see us working zone step, trying to work our head upfield. I know that's difficult to see. You probably put those on slow motion to, to note uh, the situation on the youngsters and see them able to pick them up. 
Uh, but we're just zone stepping, trying to get ahead upfield, and uh, that particular front there was an Eagle Five, a double Eagle Five, what we termed it as, and uh, we had to change some of our blocking schemes there, of course, to, to be able to handle. Hey, hopefully now that's going to show you what we're trying to accomplish here with our zone step. Our next area we're going to talk about in, and this is used only, uh, I say only, primarily whenever we go to a dive situation. You'll use it some on the inside beer, and uh, and you'll do it, of course, on the dive plays, and that's a double combo block. We signify that with a capital DC, and all our plays that we give, we want these uh, techniques written on the man that he's going to be. If we give out a, a scouting report, then uh, and whenever I, I list my people up there, if I'm going to put out my tackle there and my guard there, and they have a double combo, then I'm going to put DC in the middle of both of those. So when they get that scouting report, they know that they're double combo on that particular defensive front. That's something they ought to memorize. It shouldn't take very long for them to learn that. But we just always put it in there for them to reference to if they need to as well. Okay, on the double combo block. Now, this is uh, another situation where we have uh, double combos. And let me throw some fronts up here for you and kind of help you out. If we were running a, a dive play now versus a 27 front, all right, and we're going to have the three linebackers stacked in here as such then we'll want to double combo the two downside, uh, down inside men, all right? And our double combo, the center is going to play side double combo. So if our play is in this direction, then he and the guard will double combo this two technique. Generally, we have twos protecting inside gap, all right? They can certainly stun away from you, but generally that's the case. So we're going to step to make sure that we get a piece of him here we must make a good lateral step here to get ourselves over in that direction as we work up field. We need a good solid hit out of this guard on that two technique with her face mask, uh, you know, below under his shoulder pads, and we got to stay down low so we can get in his legs. Uh, be best if we were in the thigh pad area. That's what we shoot for, all right, and get the youngster stood up a little bit. We want to negate his charge at least until we can get the center over to him and then what we do wrong, and it's always a, a problem here, is this man oftentimes seems to want to be a pivot man, and our center will come over and turn this two technique to the outside. That's absolutely what we do not want. Uh, that's, that's worse than being stacked up in the hole, really. All right, now what we're trying to accomplish here is straight movement directly back, so that we, we want that down man, that two technique to be driven to come straight back. All right, and we'll try to show you that, what we're trying to accomplish on uh, when we go to practice session here. All right, but we've got to have that double combo out of these two. Again, just step with your right foot in this case, kind of like a zone step, but you're just making sure that you get your helmet and his outside number. All right, and then we want to come be sure that we're working down and staying down. Center's got a good, strong lateral strip with his right foot, bringing his left foot immediately up under him, and then they need to get their butts together right here just like you teach any double block here, double team block. We got to have the rear ends together here so that they're pushing up the field. Uh, we've got to have movement up the field on their on our dive plays. Backside is, does the same thing now. Uh, the play's going to her right side on this particular thing. Then my guard's got to take that inside number good and tough. My backside tackle a good hard lateral step and get squared up and we want this man straight up. All right, as you see, of course, this man right here is not blocked. We're going to require our backs to read that man. If he steps up in here, then we expect our running back to hit right here behind that double team and slide outside. All right. If this man's on the scrape, taking B gap, then we're going to expect him to read that middle backer and get back in the middle here. All right. And he'll miss that read a few times, but that's not offensive line's fault. What they they are concerned about is that we get this movement directly back straight back up the field. You know, and you might move him four yards, five yards, as long as you can keep him moving, move him. He'll cut off pursuit uh, oftentimes and give us a good alley to run in. But we, we've got to run the counter dive on that. So double combos are a must uh, uh, versus uh, in use of the dive play because we've got to have that movement. And we're not going to be big old strong kids 90% of the time. We're, we coach for quickness and we, uh, we off-season our kids with a, tremendous, with a lot of running and stuff. We certainly lift weights and uh, try to have a good weight program, but we want, we're interested in quickness.
that's what we live on is quickness and we've got to be able to move people up the field and and when we need to move somebody then we'll double combo those people making sure that we get them up there okay we'll take a, a shot here now on our uh, workout and try to give you an example of uh, of our youngsters working a double team block then Hey, this will show you on the double team block what we're trying to do. Of course, we'd like to get up under the pads on that youngster and just got to get the center stuttered over lateral and work upfield on the block. And here we have some counter dive plays that we just want to show you. Most of the time, we're getting double teams inside on the counter dive plays. You can see we get to cut back all the way back across here behind the other double team on the other side. Didn't get a block downfield like we should have. This is goal line play. It's more just down block right here. And look at some combination blocks that will be used basically, uh, particularly this first one here is going to be against a, uh, uh, or in use during a, a veer play where we're going to have uh, some movement required at the point of attack as well as uh, cutting off pursuit is going to be very vital to us as well. All right, and this particular block here is something that we try to stick names on them here that work pretty good. And, of course, all our offense, you saw our first tape, is basically uh, Jim Wacker tape out of whenever he was in southwest Texas. Uh, we picked our offense up from them. And, of course, most of our terminology follow what they used at that particular time uh, in their offensive scheme. Uh, this will be called what we're going to use now will be a uh, stab and cut. All right, a stab and cut block, and in conjunction with that, we always have to have a stab and cut. Then we must have a crossover, a crossover read is what we call it. A crossover read block goes in conjunction with that, or the man away on the back side of that uh, play side man is just doing the stab and cut. Uh, primarily, we're talking about guard blockers now. People are using, uh, or playing the guard position. You know, it's going to be the center. Or it could be the backside guard, and then the tackle would have the crossover. So these have to work in combinations on these. Now, the purpose of stab and cut is to get some movement at that point of attack, all right? And yet, we've got to get to pursuit, all right? So we're running outside beer play. Then our point of attack is over the tackle, all right? We're coming over the inside foot of the tackle here. And if we were to work, look again, and we'll just put out a 27 front, because it'll give us a good picture of, uh, of when to use these particular techniques that we're speaking of. Uh, I know a lot of you get a lot of different kinds of blocks and so forth, and, and there's rules to use on those things. And we'll kind of sum that up as we finish up on some of the things that we do's and don'ts and when you, when you have to pull off of a block. Uh, when we use the stab and cut, we're going to ask this man to stab this man with his face mask and his outside number. All right? And we're going to rip that outside number hard and low and just we're just giving him one good hard shot and then we're headed to cut that linebacker off that that'll have to be straight up the field and you should be able to pick up pursuit on that backer at that time all right that's a stab and cut now that we're running that face mask to the outside number of that defensive lineman all right now then in conjunction with that with the stab and cut goes a crossover read and we must be able to con to use it as well and now the center has got to come to parallel down the line of scrimmage, and we're taking out below the knee. We're going to the shin bones with our shoulder pads and helmet. We want to head it across in front of him. And we accomplish that now, and we call it a crossover read because we're crossing over with the offside foot on the first step, and like he's stealing first, uh, second base. Uh, we're going to cross over with that foot. We know that's the quickest way to get there. We must be very low, and we've got to drive our helmet and shoulder pads directly down the line of scrimmage. And if that youngster has, has fought the pressure they're immediately off of him, we kind of slowed him down. That gives us plenty of time to get there. And we ought to drive our head and shoulder pads right across here. If he's kind of read and try to hang up with this guy, then we're going to scramble right down the line and get our head upfield. All right, but it's imperative and a must that we cross over with the offside foot all right and just pivot on this foot and we've got to cross over and get to parallel with the line of scrimmage right straight down the line if you don't you're going to end up hitting behind it and that's what youngsters of course intend, uh, uh, try to do sometimes it takes some work to working on these techniques we would in conjunction with that if we run an outside veer to the strong side or to the right over here then we would stab and cut on the back side as well getting the backside linebacker with that guard 
and then again cross over Reed with the backside tackle all the way over with that first step be his left foot all the way over with the head running right down the line of scrimmage and we want to block them in the shins we don't need to tear out a knee or anything we're not trying to take out knees we want to be down low and get our helmet down in the shins there if you don't cut them completely down uh, he gets his hands on you then we've negated his presence there we'll get by him we won't have a problem with that we feel like we can do that at any time if we'll just get our head and shoulders across the man and if he's trying to read and skate with that man outside for some reason then we want to turn our head upfield there and uh, try to square up upfield and you'll have him screened off and that's all that's really necessary you're having some movement there because you're really stabbing hard in the beginning but it's not, uh, it's not a, a prolonged block. It's an immediate block, an explosion into him, and get off of him. You have to get your hands on him and get off of him. All right, but you got to run that face mask through that outside number. That's a high priority for us, a block that we use uh, any time that you're sitting in there with that two technique, particularly. And, uh, you know, it's almost impossible to do a three technique. You're going to have to go to a, uh, to a zone lock on or something, a zone step, or you're just going to lock up at that man. Okay, we'll give you an idea now. We'll show you stab and cut right quick on, uh, in practice and try to give you an idea of what we're trying to do and maybe critique. Now we'll show you what we do on a stab and cut. Just want to stick that man and then go throw up field. Center's reaching over on him. I want to work down very low. Here we get some stab and cuts in this situation. If you're trying to watch the backside over there, we'll do a pretty good job on the play side regular and uh, break loose here for a long run. Most of these videos, I think, in, in the game situation, you probably have to put them on slow speed to be able to recognize some of those. They're very difficult to see full speed. Okay. The stab and cut block. We also go along with, uh, with one where we're now, we're not worried about movement in any way. We're worried about pursuit only. And that would come along with our option game, our lead option, our load option that we're going to run, our counter option, where all we're trying to do is get the football outside. We're not worried about down people. We ought to run by them very quickly. So we don't even have to bother with any movement whatsoever on them. If we can just control them at the line of scrimmage and keep them in the line of scrimmage area, then we ought to be able to get to the outside without any problems. All right, and we do that and we try to accomplish that and. and in uh, a manner in which turns out to what we call a fast fold, all right? And that again goes, follows right along with the stab and cut and crossover read. The fast fold block now will be used along with the crossover read just like the stab and cut was, all right? There's no difference in it. So we'll put our 27 front up here again. And again, I'm using the 27 front all the time because uh, we get more of these techniques involved here. It's not quite so much just zone step as we would see maybe in a 50 front. All right? Now, here's what we're looking at now. If, if we want to fast fold this man and we're running uh, lead option in this direction, speed option going in that direction, all right? And we're going to the right with it. Then we're going to go outside him very low. You dip your, this shoulder, this left shoulder, dip it underneath him and get up the field and throw on that linebacker. We care absolutely nothing about him. We want to get off of him and make sure he doesn't even make contact with us if possible. Don't go way wide now or that just draws him and stretches him out if he's a good reading lineman. But we want to be very quick and dip that shoulder and get under him almost into a bear crawl will work fine and pick off this linebacker going in that direction. Remember, Going with the stabbing, uh, with the uh, the fast fold block, we also must cross over read. All right, that goes as combination with it. So again, we're crossing over with the opposite foot, parallel to the line of scrimmage, driving our head across our shins down there, good and low. All right, backside the same way. Fast fold this one. Get to that linebacker that's on pursuit. Cross over read with the backside tackle, parallel to the line of scrimmage. Again, stepping over with the opposite foot there. Our head and shoulders now are going to be pointed right parallel down the line of scrimmage. And if that man's wanting to skate for some reason, then we've got to get outside of him and work our head up field. All right? Those are, those are very simple techniques. Of course, fast fold is a very easy technique to do. It's something that must be done very quick. Now, if you're an old, fast, slow lineman, you're going to have difficulty with those things, and we don't want our lineman like that. Well, they're going to have to be quick. 
Uh, we, we sometimes play with some pretty small individuals. But we've had some big kids that weigh 225, 230 that uh, played center for us there as a college football player now, and he could pull those techniques off. He had great quickness with him and, and uh, great strength and such, of course, and, and, uh, and he'd move his feet, and he learned to do those very well. So a big kid can do them as well, but he's going to have to work on his agility and his quickness and, and uh, spend some time uh, improving his uh, quickness, on his quickness drills and such. Okay, we'll take a look very quickly on the fast fold and the crossover read combination then on, uh, on a practice tape. Take a look here at uh, fast fold block. Very quick, you didn't see dropping your shoulder a little bit, getting around, throwing up on the linebacker. And we have our center just reaching over. We see some of these right here at times on the uh, same thing here, I think, on our game situations. You'll have to see those people uh, probably slow them down to be able to notice what they're trying to do. It's basically offensive tackles and tight ends used. And I put it last. It's very similar to the stab and cut block, but it's going to be done to the inside instead of the outside. And we do this on several things. We do it on inside veer in particularly uh, with our offensive tackle. And let me show you what we do. Uh, if we were taking a, we had a down man, we're looking at a five technique out of a 50 front. We're looking at a five technique on that tackle. And we want to do that, this five technique with this offensive tackle. In other words, we're going to, this time now, instead of outside, we're going to drive our face mask through his inside number and throw directly upfield to get that linebacker. We must get to him, all right? This was, we're gonna run inside veer right at him. And what we're gonna do on the inside veer is, is, is we kind of tend to see, uh, if you've seen our first video, we're gonna double combo backside and we're gonna bump across and get that backside linebacker. Now, if you have a 50 front for some reason that run a lot of ghost stunts with their backers, they're just gonna blitz straight ahead, then we'll pull that man off and we'll, we'll zone step and make sure we get him picked up. But this doodad works very well. Your tackle can move and he can get there, but he's got to hurry. We want the face mask rammed through the inside number, throwing straight up field to make sure we get that linebacker. And of course our running back then is aiming right at the guard's butt and then he's sliding outside, cutting off that tackled block. All right, that would be inside veer play. We also do that on our counter dive play. We block those exactly the same way. And you say, well, you can't turn that tackle loose. Yeah, you can. You know, if you stab him inside and then get off of him quick, he won't see that running back till he's already right here. He must be closing. And of course, if he closes down, you gotta lock up with him, all right? But we got that on the inside veer. Uh, our tackles, is, again, basically is a, is a uh, play for our play side tackle on inside veer or on the counter dive, all right? Uh, now then, we use the same doodad block, exact same technique, whenever we see a defensive end here, probably a nine or a six technique, either one will work. And you can put, a, if we put a 50 front up here, it don't really make any difference if it's 26 or 50 or what it is. But we're gonna run outside veer now. And of course, we're coming over the inside leg of the tackle again then what we want to do is we want to do that this end to make sure he does not wreck our mesh. If he's coming outside of us, then we don't worry about it. But if he's wanting to wreck our mesh, which they do at times, and they're certainly going to do to you if you're going to run the veer, they're going to try to wreck the mesh on the outside veer and stun in there hard and quick, then we got to stab that inside number and negate that stunt and then get upfield and throw on the scraping linebacker. If that's a good linebacker, this guard cannot zone step and cut him down unless he's a great, great guard and an average linebacker, all right? And this, this man's on just a regular old zone step here and should be able to pick him up. But we got a zone step here and protect the slant in here first and then get up field, all right? But we can we do that right here and then throw straight up field. We do that on the outside veer, all right? And uh, of course, her back is, is lined up here and he's aiming right here and then slipping right outside, right in behind that tight end. All right, and that's what we use our, uh, our doodad block for. Tight ends do it a jillion times a game. Tackles, the same thing. If we see in a 50 front, then they're gonna use it a lot. If they don't have a down man on them, a five technique, then we, uh, we never use a doodad during the ball game with a tackle. But our, uh, deep, our tight ends will. Our 
tight ends to use it consistently in the ball game many, many times because we're going to run outside of here a lot of times in the ball game. Probably uh, oh anywhere from uh, 50, oh, 15 times. Out of 50 plays, we'll run outside very 15 and 16, 17 times a ball game. So this do dad block is a very, uh, very much of a necessity, and you got to practice on that. We can do that on dummies. We do that with a hand shield on dummies and throw on a dummy coming across. But you got to work it and work it and work it, and uh, get them to be sure they keep their balance and just good foot movement is all it amounts to. And again, you know, it's, it's there's nothing different to that. You're going to step with the play side foot and ram that helmet, you know, that face mask right into that inside number. You got to keep your head up and see what's going on. Don't hurt your neck and and uh, and drive that helmet through that inside number and then we've got to get off and throw straight up field. If you come here and throw back here, that linebacker will be already scraped outside of you. So those are important points here and we'll show you a doodad block their tackles on uh, on a workout tape that we've uh, a few plays that we ran there when we do that and, and show you it's the same thing as stab and cut. On a stab and cut, go outside the defensive man. A do that works up uh, inside of the defensive man. Okay? Now on the uh, do that block here, it's the same thing as stab and cut, except we're going up inside. Use my tackles and tight ends. All right, and you see a good doodad block on those two plays here by this quick side end over here and this one, and then they're exactly the same. Come right back with the uh, with the block here by the split end again, hitting and then throwing up field. It's a man, okay? Techniques that we're interested in teaching our youngsters and. And there's not anything else, no individual techniques that are that are needed in our very offensive scheme and things that we do. We have to teach our kids to down block a little bit. No, that's, that's just old basic stuff of stepping inside and getting your head across the man and working up field. That has to be done for goal line situations and uh, short yardage situations where we're going to expect people to be coming in the gaps uh, very hard. All right, and what we need to do now is maybe clarify some things as far as it's when and, and there's some times you're going to have to have your youngsters pull off of stuff and they have to do that on the football field they can't wait for you to correct it all the time and once uh, you know i know I've, I've only been here three years at bells and uh, the first year we had a difficult time getting kids to make adjustments on the uh, on the field because they don't understand it takes time as it does in any offensive scheme to teach them when and, and uh, uh and why they need to change particular blocks Let's just talk about some very simple basics here. If we are looking at, uh, at doing a uh, particular block, if we have, say, a uh, stab and cut call there, we've got, we got a play that we normally would stab and cut on. And again, you've got to teach your offensive lineman techniques of the defense where they can communicate with one another. And, and we use the old you know, Bear Bryant system there of numbering. Uh, like most people do, we got a one, two's head up, three's outside shoulder, you know, four's head up, five's outside shoulder, six head up, seven inside shoulder, and uh, eight, uh, nine outside shoulder, and then eight out real wide. Okay, we use that normal technique of numbering a defensive lineman. We must be able to do that. If you can't communicate inside, then you can't block folks, and we've got to be able to do those things. Now, what we have to, to do here is if we come up with in a situation where we have a stab and cut call and a crossover read, all right, and we want to stab and cut this two technique here, but he doesn't line up in a two. He moves the outside shoulder to a three technique, and now he's moved out here, and the crossover read man cannot get him if he's more than a man away. And we call head up, man away. If he's over more than a man away, then you got to call, over, call off the crossover read, and we'll just simply change this from crossover read to zone step, and now we'll make this a zone step. All right? So the stabbing cuts off. Also, the stabbing cuts off, so is the double combo. You can't double combo more than a man away from you. So we don't even try to. All right? This man can coming over can never get there, whether he's tackle, center, whoever he may be. You can't get there. Same thing on stab and cut. Fast fold, same thing. 
cross over reeds, he can't get there if he's over a man away, so don't even try. Change that to a zone step, all right, and change this to a zone step, and you're going to protect that area, all right, okay? Those are some things that you've got to be able to do. Youngsters must adjust to that. You know as I do, uh, we seldom ever see the same front uh, that we've seen on film out of a defensive team. They're going to change it. And they're going to change it sometimes drastically all the way from having a 50 look going to a split look inside. Or they go from an odd front to an even front. Or they go from, uh, uh, say, a 27 into a wide tackle six or something, play three deep in the secondary. They do a lot of different things to us. And our youngsters have got to be able to understand technique and they got to know what to do if that man is away from them too far and be able to call the block off. We want our center always to come up and tell where it's going to be odd or even front. If he knows they're in a split look here where they've got uh, backers, two backers sitting in here, then, they, then we're going to call that a split look. And depending, we may, they may be playing a split look with two techniques or they may be playing a normal split with three techniques. And then our guards have got to tell our tackles what they've got. And the tackles have got to tell the guards what they have lined up on them. If it's a linebacker, we just call linebacker. If it's a three technique, we say three. I got a three. Make it very simple. Call it out, what you got. If you need to, call a block out. The defense doesn't know what you're talking about anyway most of the time. If you need to call it, say, hey, this off, we got to do this. All right? And we've got to be able to recognize our fronts up here. And you don't have to know the entire front. You got to know what's lined up on you. And you got to know what your partner's been doing there, the man next to you, how he's blocking, what his responsibility is, so he can call that off. He knows, he should know, and be able to tell you, say, hey, I can't get there, we got to do this. All right, but we got to communicate up there and see, how, see what we're doing. If confusion sets in on what you're doing, zone step everything. You can cover it if you zone step everything. Let me have you stress something now, since we're a zone offensive football team, let me show you something that I want you to stress to your individuals and do it early so that they get the understanding of zone concept. And that's to say, if we're going to put a two technique over here, all right, and we're going to put a five technique over here, all right, or if we move this man all the way down to a four, let's move him to a four technique, and uh, say they're going to play some stack six look or something, all right, we're going to stack the twos. And they're going to stunt this into A gap, this one's got B gap, and the linebacker's going all the way to C gap. All right, our people can block that, but don't block man up here and mess up everything and turn the linebacker loose for a big hit. Zone step, you're gonna zone step. If you zone step, you'll wreck right into him before you start up field. That first step, you'll see him coming. All right, same thing here. If I'm zone stepping on this man, if I have a zone step on him, then I know, or if I've got a stabbing cut, I know that I've come here, he disappeared inside, don't chase him, he's gone. All right, the play's going this way. We need to go upfield. So we zone step. All right, if this man's coming on a good hard slant inside, you'll wreck right into him. All right, because you're really taking that step with this one right here. He's coming here. If you feel him bang into you right there, then just lock up with him, work your head in on him, and lock up with him and stop the penetration right up here. you got to stop. The, if you'll stop the penetration, we can run the offense. If you let him through, then we can't. All right, and that's a, a primary concern of mine is that sometimes we get in against a 50 front that's going to slant and they're going to do that to you and they'll generally line up in fours. They can slant from a five, but that's kind of hard to get there. All right, and, and tell, the, tell this youngster right here that he's got his own step to the backer. he got his own step, that's all. All right, and then if that tackle comes down on a good hard slant, a 50 slant, this guy had his own step, then he can come off upfield and pick up the backer, scrape it. This five technique slanting down can be picked up with this guard that's zone stepping. All right? And you can get there. If this is a good tackle that's slanting hard, you can make it easy. All right? But there are times now that you've got to pull off these things up here, the stabbing cuts, the doodads, or the uh, double combos and such. We have to do that, and you've got to tell those people. The double combos and the stabbing cut. If he's more than a man away and a crossover reads, uh, if they're more than a man away, forget it. You can't get there. Then change your block to his own step if you need to. All right? And our youngsters, sometimes we'll be in a three technique. Uh, if we set up and use a three technique, we may want to... 
we may have a split look up front, and we've told our youngsters that this week against this split look that we're going to zone step the dive plays. Okay? And this kid all of a sudden, instead of a three, he moves over to a two technique. Well, the zone steps off now. Let's double combo him. All right? And get some movement straight back right here. If this is a true split look and they're playing a seven or nine or seven or six out here, then I've got a zone step with this man right here, and then I'm upfield. I can check his back right on the scrape right here. All right? But let's get a double combo. If he moves over to two technique or a one technique, then double combo him. All right? We can do that. On the play side, that's the call side. The play's going that direction. You know, and any time you've got a one or a two technique, one technique sitting there all the way to gap, man, that just makes it that much easier. If he's a two technique, then you can still get to him. If he's a three technique, call off the double combo, change that to zone step where you can lock up that guy, and then he can go up, check the backer, and work the backside backer. All right? Our first video, we explained some of these blocking rules and such to you. And we just tell our youngsters on the zone step that we're going to work zone step towards your man. If, you're, if you've got a backer that's, uh, in, that's lined up in your zone to begin with, if you can't get that linebacker, then you go to the backside linebacker. Now, if you can't get the backside linebacker, then you go down to the free safety. Okay? So we, we say backer, backer free. All right, but we work it that way. You can't get the play side backer, check the back side backer, he's already down, then go to free safety. All right, and no time to waste on that. We want to be working straight up the field as hard as we can get up the field. You know, everything's in front of you and what you're trying to accomplish is up front. So we want to attack up field on that. Okay, maybe that'll help us out a little bit. We want to cover, now go into a pass protection that we use, and we only use two different kinds of pass. Uh, we've tried different ways, and. And this is a little different from what we learned at the universities whenever we were down visiting them uh, on things. We just found that we didn't have enough time to spend on pass blocking, that we had to simplify things a little bit. And uh, I know they kind of put a man on man, or you two men are blocking these two men. And we did not have very much success at that. We were letting some people get away from us on stunts. So what we started doing, we, we made it just as simple as we could make it. And we're going to zone step in the direction of the play. All of our play action passes are come off of veer stuff, either lead, load option, outside veer, counter dive. So in the direction of the play, we're going to zone step and protect the gap to, the, to that side. That's all there is to it. Backside doing the same thing. Anytime you're uncovered on the backside, guard or tackle, you do not have anybody in your zone, we'll peel off and pick up backside. Kind of keeps the quarterback from getting hit in the back. But it's play action pass. To, the, to whatever the call side is. To the call side, we're going to protect gap. And we're going to get that gap and make sure that we, do, we don't let anybody through it. And we're not worried about a down man. We're not worried about a linebacker. We're worried about that gap. And we want to keep them on the line of scrimmage. Also, I want my people fired out. We want to fire out. Don't stand up and pass block. We're going to fire with a good hard zone step in that gap looking for somebody. Nobody comes then we'll stay right down there and stay low and we'll step up field a yard. You can work up field, all right, but don't back up. We're trying to run play action back behind you, and it won't look good if you don't step out and fire out low and hard like you should. And then just scramble the guy and stay with him. Stay in contact with him. If you stay in contact with him, then we'll have time to get the football thrown. Okay, the other passing blocking is, and we do not – we are not very much, if you saw the first video, we don't throw too many drop back passes. All right, we're getting a pro set here like this, and we're going we're gonna to throw a, what we call 70 series passes or uh, pocket pass, drop back pass, straight drop backs, five step drop on the quarterback. You know, we're going to put our backs on our linebackers, any linebacker to your side, you've got him. All right, and our other people here are going to take the down men. Our up front people, center's free to take down, or if he's got a backer in the middle, then he can take middle backer. All right, but we're going to go for down people. However, they're aligned. The guard's got number one down man to his side. The tackle's got number two down man to his side. If we're rushing the six man front, then we tell our backs back there that they're responsible for the linebacker first and the defensive end second. If I got three people to their side and someone's coming. Then they got to check backer. You know, if they're sending eight, then we don't have enough to block eight. We only got seven blocking. Okay? So we see a situation here at times that they're going to get into it. 
you know, they can put too many men on you. Have to throw the football pretty quick. But we're not a drop back passing team, and we do that probably the way everybody does. They made the rules nowadays, of course, where all you got to do is put your hands up on them and keep your hands in front of them, and, and uh, they legalize holding. And so that's what we do. We're gonna individual people would be if if my man were here, my defensive man, and I was the offensive lineman right here. I'm gonna step with my inside foot first, inside. And then I'm going to take this foot and pivot it back and step right here. All right? That protects my inside gap, making sure he's not coming in here because I want him ran outside. If the quarterback's back here, I want this defensive man run around him, of course. Okay? So we're going to take a step with our inside foot right here and then pivot and open up and square up just like this. We're going to face the sideline. All right, and do not let him come inside of you. You make him run outside. Show him the quarterback. And then get your hands up under his shoulder pads right there. We put our thumbs together and our hands up under like I'm sure everybody else does. And we put them right in those numbers right there. And we push them and just start running with them. And we want this guy run right back by here. All right? Simplest, easiest block, I think, in football is that one right there. And that drop back passing. They shouldn't get away from you. You prevent that man that's head up with you if he's a two technique and you're a guard sitting in here preventing the inside rush. If you'll step with that inside foot hard and pivot the other one back here, then you've built this wall right here. He must, he's not gonna run around up here to get to you. He's gonna come straight at the quarterback. Then step into him right there, keep your hands on him and move your feet. You just got to run and, and run with him. And you can make that work for you that's simple. We don't work on that very much at all. That's a very simple uh, drop back passing game. We don't throw a lot of those. Uh, our drop back passing game, to be right honest with you, is to set up our screens and draws off of that. And we get a lot of mileage off, off a draw. All right, and we do the same thing. If we want to look right quickly here, I'll show you our screen play. Uh, just to mention it to you and what we're trying to accomplish. We're going to run our screen play with these three men right here in the middle. Our tackles will stay in block but our, both guards and our center will be the man to pull out on the screen to that particular side. And what we're gonna do is we'll draw this up here and, and put her in here with a, say a 50 front look on us right here. All right, and what we're gonna do, and we put this man out in the pro set. All right, we'll reduce this end down a little bit, maybe bring a tackle down to the linebacker set on the reduced side. Okay, linebackers now are responsible to be blocked by the offensive back. We don't worry about him, guard. Guard's got number one. Center's got zero. Guard's got one, tackle's got two. So here's number one and here's number two. And all we're gonna do is step back and let that guy wait on him. Wait on him. If he stands on the line of scrimmage, just stand right there and watch him. All right? But once he begins to rush right there, which he will pretty soon, then lock up with him and run him. Same thing right here. We're gonna lock up him and run him by. Start him by right here. Center just going to negate this guy, drop and shuffle and stay in front of him. Keep him in front of you. All right? We're going to drop and handle this man. We're going to drop and handle this man right here. All right? If the linebacker shoot, probably we're going to screen this direction. We're screening right. If the linebacker comes, that back must block him, even though he's a pass receiver. He must step up and block him. So if we've got a blitz coming here, then we want to step up and block him. The play side guard's gonna call a count. He's gonna call go after two full counts. And he's gonna take off and block the outside lane. We call that lane one. All right, we have lane two here, lane three back inside. The center's gonna drop it right down the line of scrimmage and we're going to two. This guard over here on the back side, he hears him holler go, then he's gonna try to clean up inside on this back if his backers come and step up and knock the fire out of him block him hard and tough and then slip him and release right here we want to catch the football right there where we can catch the ball and then turn in this manner all right and get it up the outside out there tackles continue to block tackle stay with your man don't get off of him stay with him all right we ought to be running those those defensive ends in this case ought to be running way back here quarterback quarterback get back here set up and then retreat enough there that you can drop the ball over to him however it needs to be thrown to him, either lobbing it over a man or shooting it right to him. And get it to him pretty quick and let him run the football. We have good success with that. That's a good screen. I picked that up from Texas Tech. Uh, uh, 
10, 12 years ago, and they did a good job with it. And we found that uh, our guards usually run a little better than their tackles do, and our old centers use our best offensive linemen. So uh, we've got them some pretty good folks out front there on the screen, all right? And they do not wait on anybody. They come outside, when they take that guard, that lead guard gets outside, he's gone. He's going for the outside man in lane one. Center's running downfield. They can be downfield. We're not going to throw the football across the line of scrimmage anyway. So we're just going to turn the On these particular plays, he just wanted to show you a little bit about pass protection right quick on uh, play action passes, and we're just blocking toward the call. Let's see if we're getting good pass protection there. We're doing a good job throwing the ball back, making some good reads. That's the only read routes we ran. Your plays against in a playoff game here to show you a little screen pass right here. We're throwing the screen and not executed great. We probably should have stayed outside a little bit better on this. You can see our lineman releasing downfield. Doing a pretty good job there. Always have a tendency to want to cut back. Not a good idea. Here we're gonna put a man in motion out to that side and we're throwing a dumper out there out of an unbalanced set, a great catch, a nice throw right inside there to him. We'll talk about offensive line play now and, and uh, what kind of things we like to do and work out and any kind of quickness stuff. Quickness drill you can do uh, from sled work, you can work on quickness on sled. We wanna do strive. And every drill that we run, whether it's on sled, it's on the chute that we're working on or whatever it may be, that we're going to do that as quickly as we possibly can. Great to work them on running ropes and stuff. you got time to do that. I know you get limited on amount of time. We don't like to work our youngsters out for a particularly long time either. And we like for our kids to go uh, everything they do with as, as much quickness as we can in every drill that we're trying to work on. Uh, our kids have to play on both sides of football, and we're not a very uh, uh, large school, and, and of course you don't have that many football players, so we don't work as much live stuff with the offensive linemen sometimes as what we'd like to, simply because uh, we can't afford to beat ours up every day. And uh, we, have to, we have to use some hand dummies. We don't use uh, the big bags very often, but uh, sometimes certainly those can be helpful to you too. It's kind of whatever you like to do. But we want to incorporate quickness in every aspect of offensive line uh, practice that we're going to go through. Uh, we work our sled work, and it's just whatever you want to do with sled work. We want to line ours up, and we're going to work uh, five or seven man sled, whatever you have there, and we're going to work that sled where they'll learn how it is and how what kind of rate of speed that we can accomplish there. We want to zone step into that sled and get up the field, get them used to attacking the sled and attacking upfield out of a zone step. I think you have to do that. And the sled has been uh, very valuable in, in that respect there as well. So we want to work as a unit there, getting all five of them off together and uh, just working on zone step. There's not a whole lot of uh, other technique stuff you can do under that. It's working your head up, keeping your face up field, and, uh, and digging those feet and staying down low on that blocking sled. We don't want you hitting that dummy up high. We want it down low on that blocking sled, and we just want to see all five of us doing that. And if we see a kid that's just overextending and driving, uh, almost diving at a youngster's feet, then that shows up very quickly on the sled because the rest of them go off and leave him. He'll be laying there on the ground. So sled work works very good. Uh, if you got a five-man sled, it's great. If we use a one-man sled some, uh, a good, I think a good uh, drill oftentimes to teach balance and stuff is use that crowd or two-man sled. Uh, not only use that as partners, but also let one individual drive that sled, and he'll learn to keep a good base under him and uh, to work himself up field and get in a good hitting position to move it. Uh, we don't have a Crowther sled, I wish we did. I think two-man Crowther, there's a lot of different things you can do on that, and I'm sure many of you use that to uh, all your sleds to a great deal of good use. Uh, we could probably learn something from as well. Uh, we have a chute where we work uh, seven people at a time on, and that's when we usually use our big bags and put the big bags on one side. It's nothing more than and uh, some uh, tubular steel that we've welded together there, you know, and put legs in it so that they do not have very much room to work. And uh, it's, it's, you know, fairly low to ground. It's about four foot or so off the ground of this top rail. And we're going to put those people in the stance here and put the bags on the backside through them right there. And we want to zone step and go get that bag good and tough. And that'll keep you down low too. I think those things are great quickness and stuff will get the job done there. All right. Uh, 
We, but we do that and we work at shoot every offensive day. We work shoot and we work at five man sled every offensive day. And then of course, sometimes we use one man sled. We use a one man sled more for balance and stuff than, than anything else, just to make sure that they're staying uh, uh, squared up with a good, good square stance. That sled will turn on you if you don't. All right, so the five man sled and that, and that shoot are, are absolute must there. And as I mentioned a while ago, we're not going to beat each other to death. So sometimes whenever we're going to certainly going to have to work some live technique, but I don't think it's necessary to sit there and, and hammer and hammer and hammer those youngsters. If you don't have the personnel to do that with, we just don't want ours beat up that much. And, and we don't have that many youngsters to choose from. They have to take too many reps, uh, to be able to do that. So we use a lot of, of uh, hand shields and what have you to, uh, to catch the block of that individual, particularly when we're working on crossover ridge where we're hitting down on the shin bone area, you know, then, uh, you know, you can beat them up a little bit doing that. And we get them, we tell them, put that hand dummy down there and, and catch the blow with that. And we just wear that hand dummy on our arm and we get our arms down and uh, we use, a, you know, a shield there that's about, uh, oh, you know, three by two or something that, that's big enough that, uh, that they can get it down on their legs, protect their shin for the, but those are things that we do. We don't have any great secrets to that. I think the thing we have to do is stress uh, very strongly what you need to, to have happen and how quick it has to be done and what you're trying to accomplish. Get in their minds what they're trying to accomplish. So they're trying to accomplish uh, movement, uh, pursuit, cutting off pursuit, or uh, they got to have a combination of that on that particular play. Uh, and once when they get that in their head, then they can stick those other things in there with them, and they can. Uh, they can adjust during the ball game to some things because it won't ever work out in a ball game, of course, just like you thought it would in practice. And someone will do something different, and they're going to have to come over and tell you what things are being done, and uh, and make those adjustments to that. But uh, hopefully those things will help you. And and like I said, we're not very uh, uh, complicated in our workout stuff. We're going to work reps on stuff, and we're going to make that slide uh, five man sled, and we're going to work underneath that chute out there and make them stay down low, and uh, and drive and stress quickness at all times. Talk on here is going to deal with the running backs and, and the fundamentals and techniques that we want to try to teach our young people to uh, as running backs. Obviously, running back and beer, uh, the quicker you are as any running back, the quicker and the more speed you have, the better off you are. We must have great lateral movement as well and be able to cut and move. Uh, our running backs in our league are usually, uh, you know, we're, we're usually pretty small, anywhere from 140 to 170 pounds. And, uh, and we had, we've had some great ones, had a great one this year that had uh, about nearly 1,700 yards rushing uh, over the tailback spot, nearly all of that coming off the outside beer and counter dive. And uh, those are things that, uh, uh, that we had, we had great success with him. We took a youngster his first year to start for us. He's a senior, uh, hadn't played a whole lot, and he gained uh, nearly 900 yards rushing So at the fullback spot. And, uh, and uh, we feel like that our, Quickness, uh, if we want to have a runner, if you've got one that's pretty much straight ahead runner and not much of a darter and diver, then we're going to play that straight ahead runner over to fullback place because he's going to handle a dive more than anything else. A dive, he will come to his side probably a few more times in the dive than will the other side. Uh, you know, just suit your personnel to where they are. We like our speed back. If we got one that's, that's quite a bit faster than the other, we're going to play him over the tailback spot to help us out on the pitch because we're like anybody else. We're a little more right-handed than we are left-handed. Okay? So we'll go through some fundamentals here and, and uh, try to draw a little bit and show you what we want to accomplish as, uh, uh, as running backs and, and so forth. Uh, if you watched our other video then, we've talked about stance and alignment there. We're going to align about four and a half yards with our feet off of the football. And we're going to always line up in the same position. If our guards have a three-foot split, then we're going to line up behind our guards. If our guards cut their split down, then we're still going to line up in that original position. We do not want to move around our stance. We want to line up all the time in exactly the same place with our running backs. And you'll show it. We'll show you here in a little bit whenever we go through stuff that we work on a strap and uh, uh, our workout film that we'll show you running outside veer and counter dive. But just the running backs and quarterback will be off of a strap. Everything we do is off strap on handoff stuff. So we're hitting the same place and just gets to be a habit of doing it. Uh, so we're four and a half yards off of the football. If we put the football up here, then we want to, our uh, line of scrimmage is here, then we want to be four and a half yards off the football with our tail back and four and a half yards off with our full back. We want the inside hand down 
and we want our feet parallel, so we end up in a three-point stance. It looks like that on both sides. Now, we flip our formation, so we flip our backs to both sides. They've got to learn to take off with their right hand down and with their left hand down, all right? And they can do that. We uh, had assistant coach one time that changed that for us and said, hey, we, this may make us more consistent, and it sure did. I, I'm sold on it right now, okay? But we've got to have our feet parallel. We want them parallel there, toe-to-toe, all right? And we want our inside hand down four and a half yards of their feet off a of football. Uh, what we're trying to accomplish here now, we just take some aiming points and stuff, and we're going to run outside beer, and I mentioned this when it's going through offensive line play a little bit. Outside beer, we're coming in a path over the inside leg of the offensive tackle on that play side. All right, and we're going to take a step with the inside foot directly at that. Our first step's with our inside foot, and then our next step would be with our outside foot and we want to work directly at the inside leg of that tackle then, all right? Same thing as working over here. If we run outside beer to the left side over here, now it's the same exact thing, all right? We're going to sit here in this three-point stance. Inside foot's going to step first. We're headed right here. It's going to go directly at him, all right? And then our next step's outside, inside, outside. I don't care how many steps they take getting there. I want them to explode getting there, all right? But we're going to take that inside. That's that's working on the outside beer. You got to dive at the inside leg of the tackle. Now, if we're running counter dive, and or if you wanted to run a base dive or inside beer, then we're going to run straight ahead, not necessarily over the guard. We're going to fire straight ahead, all right? And we must make those reads. We at times, if we have a three technique setting up here, then we got to read that three technique on a dive. If he stretches, we got to go inside. If they can block him and he doesn't stretch hard, I'm saying stretching, I mean he stretches. All right, then we got to cut inside. If not, then we got to bend it around and get outside and get upfield. All right, if we've got a middle linebacker on the dive, then we're going to read the middle linebacker. If he steps outside, we cut inside. If he steps up and fills the A gap, then we're going outside the double team block that we put up there. So those are reads that must be made. All right, in those in those particular areas. If we're working our pitch, if we've got pitch man, we're going outside bear dive. If we're pitch man's going this direction, we're going to lead step. Let me draw it down here. Inside hand down. We're going in this direction as pitch man. All right, we're going to lead step a half step with that lead step. We don't cross over. All right, lead step, and then we bring his foot across. So we'll lead step in that direction there. Okay, pushing off that hand and take it off. But we got to get there quickly. We don't cross over on the option for the pitch man. And of course, we, we want them hauling it as quickly as they can. Uh, very, very important. We might mention here as well, when we go to handoffs, all handoffs we take, and, and what we want to do is we're going to do the old handoff situation where you, you've got your elbow up toward the football, you know, and just make a pocket for it. We tell them to give us a soft squeeze on the ball. Just a, just a little soft squeeze. That quarterback wants it back. He can get it out of there. We tell our quarterbacks, we don't drag it out. We jerk it out. We're going to jerk it real quick if we want it back. All right? But we're going to ride the ball up a lot, and we're going to go ahead and roll that elbow over. It'll pull out underneath your arm fine. All right? But we want just a little soft squeeze on it. We're going to hit and hit once in a while in the mesh. Even though we're trying to protect it, we want to get hit there. And uh, we darn sure don't want to leave it laying on the ground. And we don't want the fullback guessing. He's going to carry the fullback, or the dieback, rather. He's going to carry that football in his mind every play. All right? And the only time he don't get to carry it is when the quarterback takes it away from him. So we want that little soft squeeze on there, and we're running with the football as if we've got it on every play. And we're, we're making our cuts, and we're making our reads on every play. And then if the quarterback pulls the ball and we're getting, we've got a read to pull the ball, then we'll pull the ball and take it outside. And he's got to continue on. He's already going full speed and running hard. He's got to continue on that path and, and run it tough up in there and hopefully draw a linebacker to him or, or maybe even get a secondary man to kind of freeze for a few minutes. All right? So those are very important there on the handoffs and, and steps. Uh, you got to be able to move, people. you got to be able to move. you got to be able to spin. you got to be able to cut downfield. And that's just practice. You can, you can work your individual group work. We do it occasionally. We don't spend a lot of time on it. But we'll, we'll occasionally get our 
get us a dummy out there, you know, and let old coach handle handle the big dummy up here, and we'll hit hit right here and spin off of it and keep her balanced. Just working on that. We got to be able to do that. All right, and you've got to have be able to run with the football full speed, and uh, you know, teach your youngsters that they've got to move lateral and still going up field. We don't want to run them east and west. That's not going to get us anywhere. But we're going to have to make a lateral step or two and get outside of somebody. And, and, and you know, you got to keep, you're going to carry the football a lot as a beer back. And we've got to keep the helmets off of us, and we've got to be moving. And that's what we want to do. And, of course, uh, we've got to be moving upfield, not running to the sideline as such. Uh, these, things are, these things up here, you know, they're just normal uh, uh, things that you teach any running back, I believe, and that there is to move downfield. And, of course, any time we break past the linebackers, we always tell them to find a safety. Uh, primarily, that would be the free safety, and cut his inside shoulder. So if the free safety is coming across the field like this or coming up the field to pick you up and you're running here, then you've got to cut his inside. Aim at his inside shoulders. Don't cut way back on him. Just aim at his, at his inside shoulder right there. Attack the inside shoulder. That means he has to arm tackle. And then you've got a chance to break the ball up the field, and you're still away from pursuit that may be coming with you. Okay? So those are just individual things that we talk to about our running backs and uh, and working in the open field. Our pitch men now, if you're the pitch man on any option play, we've got a couple of things there. We've only got a couple of things that we do. Uh, one thing is if we're open where we can take the pitch, we're going to call ball more than once. All right. As soon as you think you're open, you know you're open on the pitch and there hasn't some secondary man come up and taken you immediately, then we want to call ball, ball. At least, at least twice if we possibly can. You may call it more than that if the quarterback keeps the ball and turns it up. So our pitch man then is just going to take off in this direction calling ball. All right. If he knows he's open. If some a cornerback gets off a block out here and gets up in his face or gets close to him, he doesn't say, I, he doesn't, has no call there. He just don't say anything. Just be quiet. That means somebody's on you, don't pitch me the football. We're out in trash out here and we tell our quarterbacks not to pick, not to pitch in the trash. Trash means they've got folks in the area out there, defensive people. We pitch the football out there, we're going to cause a fumble. Or we're going to lose yardage if we're lucky. That's all that would happen. But we certainly don't want to fumble the football back there behind the line of scrimmage. And, uh, and, and through that ball call, we've had great success with that. One other thing that we have to teach our pitch man to do, if we're running counter option and we're diving that man in there, our quarterback is going to take those steps and come back and ride the ball. If we've got a go in coming hard and we've been released here so we can't slow him down, if he's coming hard down that line of scrimmage right here, then our quarterback won't see him until he's at least right here and he's going to be right in his face. His responsibility on counter option only all right, only on counter option. His responsibility of this pitch man to tell the quarterback if he has a go in coming. That means in the first step out, he find, puts his eyes on that end right there. If that end's on a go stunt coming inside hard, he's going to call ball immediately. Our quarterbacks know that he's not calling for the pitch out here someplace or just a normal old pitch. He means that there's heat coming. And we're going to call ball immediately. That quarterback turns around to make that fake. The end's already committed. We're going to pitch off him to start with. He's already committed, so the quarterback don't even make the fake. Just turn and pitch the football right here, and we run with it. That end's already committed. He can't come stunting down here and then break off and take the pitch. So if he's coming down hard, our pitch man must make that ball call immediately by the second step. Then the quarterback can turn and dump the ball to him very quickly. Don't worry about fakes or nothing. Just kick him the football right quick and let him run with it and then get ready to get hit because we know it's coming. But that's the job of the pitch man, and the only thing that he's got a responsibility of doing is, uh, is protecting a quarterback on the side. If he's open, call ball. If you're not open, just hush. Don't say anything. Okay? All right. We've talked a little bit about our counter dive reads and, and the cuts and such that we would make there, and I think those are – of uh, significance, certainly, whenever you're working on uh, uh, counter dive reads, we talked about using that stretching three in there. Okay, that's a very, very prominent. If I draw this dive up to the two different sides here, uh, if we got the double combo over here, 
we're working the dive to this direction, all right? And got a three technique, we're diving in this direction. It's just gonna be a zone lock on. And our dive man's gonna hit right at the guard's butt and then slip it outside unless this guy stretches hard. If he stretches hard, then we gotta get it back up inside. And you say, well, he's coming here. That means he's stretching hard. Then this linebacker's blowing the gap here. Well, we got his own step to cover him. All right, and he got to get it back inside there and he's got to be moving. We don't need to be a target. We got to be a moving target and we want to spin and stay low and run their face up, covering the football up and we're ready to turn in either direction there and get it upfield. But we want great foot movement out of our kids and we're going to practice on that. Uh, you know, and again, we, we get in the secondary down there, then we want to try to find that free safety and cut his inside shoulder. All right, that's all the reads we really have to it as far as running backs concerned. We want them slamming it up in there. That's the number one thing that we look for is slam the hole hard. Something good will happen. All right, and sometimes you run through a tackle. Sometimes we make the wrong read. We hand the football on the outside beer, and we break the tackle at the line of scrimmage because we hit it quick. And we just get by him before he can make the, make the play on us. He just gets a hand on us. So it's very important that we're able to do that. Okay? <clears throat> now then, when we go to block lead and load options and stuff, and let's, let's take a look at that. If we're going to block our load option, we're going to start out on an inside or an outside veer path. And we're going to run the load over here, and we're going to block his nine technique. Then we're going to step with that inside foot, just like we did before. Inside foot starts in that direction. Then we take a step here. All right, we're going to make a pocket to make it look like outside veer. All right, and once we make it look like a pocket then, uh, the quarterback's gonna extend the ball. He will not put the ball in his stomach. He's just gonna step around him right there. Then we're gonna bend that off and we're gonna take the outside leg. All right, get your helmet outside of him. Don't hit him with your helmet. Get your shoulder pad on his outside leg. The helmet outside of him. And all you have to do, of course, the great thing to do would be to cut him down there and knock, him, knock his foot up behind his head. You know, but if you get that good block on him and you get him run off right there, then we're going to be able to turn the corner very quickly and get there. But you've got to slam it hard and then bend it out real quick to get that block. And that's what we teach our kids. They start out those first two steps, though, just like you do on the outside beer. And make a pocket, and then you don't worry about it. After you make that pocket, you don't worry about it. Maybe that will draw that end in. If he's taking dive on outside beer, maybe he'll close it down a step. And then if he does, and that ain't lessens your angle there to attack his outside leg, that inside to your shoulder pad. All right. So those are that's all you have to do with the load. And the lead option, hey, you got to you just got to be a blocker out there. I don't know I don't know if there's any secret to it. I'm sure those of you that have been wishbone people or something, I I marvel at wishbone people who do a great job with their halfbacks of blocking. Uh, all great wishbone teams do. But that arc block out here on the lead on the lead option, we're blocking. Uh, the man that's uh, that's uh, covering deep out here, and, and he, uh, you can do that anyway. We try to teach our say, hey, if he's gonna squat, run over him, just hit him right in the face. You know, if he's gonna do a pretty good job at you, and he's gonna mix it up, and he's a good defensive back, then you're gonna have to mix it up. You're gonna have to chop block him sometime, just cut his feet out from under him, all right? And you're gonna have to get up and just run through him, just power through him, explode right in his face or in his chest and try to keep contact with him. And then sometimes he's gonna be retreating and you're just gonna to have to run with him and try to keep him screened off. And you know, there's basically three ways there to get that done and get that accomplished and, and you just have to work at it. And get your running backs, you got to be, you know, I think the running backs ought to take great pride in the fact that they can block like offensive linemen can. You know, they get the name in the paper because they got so many yards and all that stuff. But I watch the real good beer people work and, and uh, those great running backs also load well and they do a great job on the lead block on the outside corner too so those are things that must be stressed and worked on pass blocking techniques and stuff we we pretty well attack on pass blocking we don't work with our hands or anything like we teach our offensive linemen we're going to attack those people uh if we are blocking uh, i mentioned to you a while ago where uh, backs are responsible for linebackers on 70 series blocking but on uh, play action pass and they've going to most of our play action passes come off load option or outside veer. So if we're going to go to the right here with a play action pass, all right, most of the time we'll start it right here and we'll turn that end over to him. 
We're going to block gap, gap, gap with the offensive lineman. He's going to make that tag on the fake here and then turn it out. And if he can cut him like a load block, then great. We do that. We clean up this one right here. We're going to get to right here and then bend it off quick. And he's taking any kind of trash, off-color jersey, outside the fullback's block on that. All right? No secrets to it, you know. We like to cut them down out there where the quarterback can see good. If not, just stay in front of them, keeping shielded off of him, give him a chance to set up and throw the football because we're going to do both. We're going to fake on the line of scrimmage off a counter dive and throw it from there. We're going to come out here and drop back and set up and throw, you know, and we're going to throw on the line of scrimmage and throw the out route or we're going to uh, take one step back. We throw a lot of dump routes and stuff to our tight ends. So, you know, those and there's no great secrets to doing those things. It's a matter of how much pride are you going to take in your blocking techniques? And I think you have to stress that pride and tell them that they're a lot more than just a running back to get your name to paper for scoring. And we try to stress that, that, that uh, you know, there's glory positions back there, but, uh, hey, you still got to block and get your job done. You got a job to do, and you need to get it done and do a great job of it. <clears throat> what we're going to do now, and I, I'll show you some uh, – some pictures right now we show a little practice film we just have a few clips for you to show you what we're trying to do on the outside beer and counter dive and then we'll come back in and talk just just briefly about what we do in our workouts with our running backs the film we have here just wanted to show you how we work the strap and the importance here i think of alignment and uh, making sure our, uh, running backs are hitting the holes correct each time I think it's, uh, it's something, of course, we go to practice here and we're running option stuff or beer stuff. Uh, rather, well, we always put a read man out there to to read on each uh, play, make sure our quarterbacks get that training. We didn't have a quarterback available when we were making this practice tape, and uh, or we could run some with some uh, option reads for you. And then we'll come back in and talk just just briefly about what we do in our workouts with our running backs. Okay, we talked very quickly now about uh, running back workouts. You know, we're going to start out in a listening situation like anybody does, let them catch a football a little bit. We're going to work ours on running ropes a lot. And uh, if you've got a running rope situation, if you don't have them, get you some good ones. We took a running rope that torn up a frame and put uh, rubber cord on it and made it twice uh, the piece of equipment that it was before and work very well for our kids. But our running backs spend a lot of time on the running ropes over there, carrying the football, catching the football while they're in the running ropes. Uh, running back coach does a good job of working the running ropes over there and making them use that foot quickness. And then there's not a lot to it after that. We're gonna spend time with the quarterbacks in. I would take 10 minutes individual time generally for our running backs and work some little drills or any special things that we need to cover, work on load block or, or lead blocking and uh and work on running ropes and stuff and then we're going to come back to the quarterbacks in and we're going to work our play time and stuff and all play time and it's worked off of a strap just like we showed you a while ago uh, in our in our practice clip there was uh our running backs working off that strap you buy those straps any sporting goods supply house nearly has that strap uh they have movable line splits on them you can move those colors around slide them to the line split that you want to and that's an absolute necessity to get consistency uh, with your running backs. But we do that in an in individual group and also in, in uh, the group work when we get over there with our quarterbacks, and we absolutely must do that and make sure that everybody in there. I don't want that running back, a cardinal sin, is a running back watching the football, taking the football with his eye on the ball. You've got to look where you're going and, uh, and take that handoff because you've got to make an immediate cut most of the time. You've got to read to make as well. And uh, quarterbacks, the same thing. We, we stress that very strongly. Okay, and then spend some time on the big dummy doing some blocking. Uh, you know, we hold that big dummy out there and we let them kids run through it. And we just have to get, we want them to get down on the ground and get used to that getting down on the ground and blocking. And, uh, and then work them a little bit on the lead block out there on the lead option by attacking someone carrying a dummy and attacking by backpedaling and seeing what you need to do to be able to get him down. And, uh, you know, give him those looks there, and I think you'll be in good shape with, uh, with running back drills. There's not uh, any kind of drill you do for a running back to teach quickness and, and hanging on to football and running in traffic and so forth is good. We don't hammer our running backs very much because they're, they're always playing on both sides of the ball as well, and we, we never have an abundance of running backs. So 
Uh, we don't beat them to death very much with live contact, but we spend a lot of time on quickness material stuff. That any type of drill that you can do as a normal running back drill will work great. Okay? Quarterback fundamentals. I think uh, uh, things at quarterback, uh, very quarterback's got to be a youngster. First off, you go get a youngster that, uh, uh, that throws the ball well. Number one thing we want him to do is run it well. He's got to be a great runner. Not, most of the time, we're going to put a youngster there that's our better athlete if we start him out as a youngster. And uh, our better athlete in that class, we're going to work at quarterback. We can always move him back to running back if we need to. But he needs to be a good runner, a uh, great runner, and a good passer as well, of course, as anybody would want. What you got to have more than anything else is a tough youngster, a physically tough kid, because he is going to take a beating. We put a good pair of shoulder pads on our kids, our quarterbacks, and we put a flat jacket on all of them, and um, they take a beating at, at quarterback. They're going to get hit more at quarterback than they will at any other position, and they're going to take some awful hard shots. So you've got to have a kid there that's tough, uh, a great leader, one that's tough mentally and physically. He must be physically tough. You don't have to be a big kid. Our one played this year, played 140 pounds, but uh, he was tough, and uh, the little tough kids can certainly play that position and do it very well. Uh, what we do is, uh, if we talk about quarterback fundamentals there, uh, things that we'd want to look at is your normal stuff. Check your alignment, check your defensive front. We don't read defenses very much and coverages. Uh, you've got to be able to see some things, and we talk to our youngsters and show them on film through the week, uh, a couple times a week, say, hey, look, this is what they do. Here's their cover three. This is when they're in cover two. They're in man-to-man -man here. If they're in cover three, then don't throw the football right in here. You've got to throw it right out here. You don't have to come off of that and throw it to somebody else or change the play. We don't change plays very often. You seldom do that in the ball game. But we want to give our quarterbacks that opportunity, and that's probably as much out of the passing game to get out of a potential interception situation as anything. Uh, let me show you on, on uh, just on the draw up here of, of what we do on counter steps. If you watched a while ago when we were running through our plays, then the counter steps are that. I picked this up. University of Houston used to do this, and they run the counter dive, counter option series. And this is our quarterback course going to start right here uh, with his two steps. We're taking the snap from, from center here. All right, and what we want to do in our counter dive is we want to make it look like inside veer. So we're going to take a number of steps getting turned around. If we're going to counter dive or counter option to the right, then I'm going to open this first step back here at an angle. All right, we move that left foot back here at an angle like we were fixing to run the inside veer and ride him up. Then we're going to move this foot over and put it directly parallel right where the other one was so that we are facing, we want the ball set on our belt on the snap. You gotta set it on your belt buckle on the snap. All right, put it in there. Don't wheel it around and waving it around outside or you'll drop it or get it knocked out. But our first step, you got one step, drop step here at an angle. Then our right foot comes back over where our left foot was. So we're facing this direction, all right? That makes two steps that we've taken to face this direction now. Now we're going to throw this left foot that we stepped with first all the way back around where the right foot was. So we've got right foot and left foot, and we're facing this direction now. And I understand you kind of twist it around a little bit, but if you step quick, you'd be surprised how quick you can get there. Then just step back with your, your uh, right foot again now. you got right foot here and left foot here, and we're facing the back. Bring your right foot back up and square up, and now you're facing the direction you're going. So we're taking now from the first beginning, left foot now, one, right foot two, left foot three, right foot four. We're taking four steps to get turned around. We don't like taking the football and spinning on your right foot and spinning this foot around here. You know, I just, I don't think that's good. You really spin it to right here. I don't think that's good. I think you, you don't show them any of these, show them things too quick. And I think you're much better off. You can take those four steps. And I tell my junior high kids, we do it in the seventh grade and we do it in the eighth grade. And I tell them, man, well, I ain't got time to teach you all that out here, to practice all those steps out here. We'll show you how it's done, go through it a few reps, but you got to go home and get in the bedroom in front of the mirror and step and step and step. It's like practice dancing and whatever, but you got to go home and do that on your own. And you learn to do the counter die steps to both sides and you learn to do it. You learn how to do it at school. You go home and practice on it at the house. You have time to do that. And they get to be freshmen. 
they should be able to step in there after on the third year and take those steps without any problem. And you can step. We got the, one of the quickest backs I've ever had hit the line of scrimmage, and you better step quick. But you can take all four steps and ride the ball up on the counter dive. But now you got to move your feet. You can't just kind of step around there easy. You got to step them pretty quick. Sell him on it. Do it. Practice it. I practice it until I could do it, and I could stand there and show the kids that I could do it. And I told them, hey, an older man like me can do it, then I know darn well a good young quick kid can. So that can be done, and I think that's an absolute must. It sure helps out on the reads there, and whenever your linebackers are reading quarterback, or they're going to see them anyway. And uh, that's certainly going to help you out, I think, a great deal on that. Okay? Uh, outside beer steps. You know, we're talking about bread and butter stuff here, and, and we're going outside beer in that direction. Uh, I don't have any secret number of steps. Some people tell their youngsters or quarterbacks, and they've had great success doing this, that they want a set number of steps from here to this point where they're going to ride the football. I don't. I tell my youngsters, just get the snap, set it on your belt, and I want your feet planted right here by the time this running back dives in this direction where you can reach back and ride him up to your, out, your inside foot or your front foot there. All right? I just want him over. I don't tell him how to get there. I tell him, if you can get there in three steps, two steps, four steps, but I want you there, and I want your feet planted on the ride so that you reach back and ride the ball up. You've got to reach back and ride the ball up and make sure that you ride the ball in there. Then pull the ball whenever you're parallel with this front foot up here. Don't try to pull it up in the hole. You jerk the back around. You, your poor old back don't know whether you're giving the ball or taking it in. All right, by that time, he's probably squeezed down pretty hard on it, okay? And we're going we're gonna to work our youngsters on that and, and get them to there, and we're going to work on that on the strap, and you have to do that at the running back. You can't do that over an individual. I'll be honest with you, all we do in individual work is, is we go out there and throw football and warm up, and then we get over with the running backs to, do it, to try to accomplish our running game stuff. All right? Uh, let's cover on the rest of our plays in, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, maybe – on the, holding the football and such. Uh, our youngsters here, and we're going lead and load option. Load option, I told you a while ago, dealing with the running backs, it's just like outside beer. We want it to look just like it, except don't mash up it. All right? He'll stretch and get away from you also, but if you have to, you take a little step around him, but stay down the line of scrimmage here and get around him and then get upfield on the load option. If you're running lead option, then we drop step. We tried counterstep, and we have counterstepped in the lead option, all right? But we've decided that we're better off to take the drop step, and that's nothing more than what you see everybody do, and that's, we don't back out with our left foot if we're going, going to the right. But we're going to step with our right foot back, all right? And I teach my kids to step with the right foot back and push off that foot. Step with back right, push off that foot so that your left foot's taking the next step. But you're going to push off that foot hard. And then once you've taken that step, that's delayed things a little bit, then attack up in the line of scrimmage at your defensive end you're going to be pitching off of on the lead option. All right? Attack him inside shoulder, make him take you, and then kick the ball. If he just won't take you, he's going straight up field and turn it up and run with it. But nothing upsets me any worse than run the inside veer and take the ball at the end and cut it up for one. Take the ball at the end and pitch the darn thing. And lead option is worse. You're going to lead option. I want that tail back over here running with the football on a quick sweep is what it's all about. All right? And I want you to take the ball, get it to the end as quickly as possible, make him take you, and then kick the ball out there to that man. All right? So that's, that's what we're trying to accomplish there on that. Okay? All right, we'll take a break here just, to, just for a second, and then we'll come back and show you some, some individual things with the football then. Hand placement on the football. Anytime we're riding the ball up and handing it off, we don't want the ball held back here on the back end of the ball. We want to get your hands up toward the front of it, past midways, all right? And that's going to set us. We like to, we teach our quarterbacks to pitch by putting the thumb on the laces. You know, we use the inverted pitch like most people do nowadays. It goes off real quick. But we want the ball set on our belt. We're going to put it on our belt. We run with the football here a lot. And I don't get on to my quarterbacks about not tucking it away. We're going to carry the football here. We're going to carry it in our chest a lot. As long as we've got both hands on it, we get into trouble somewhere and we know we're going to have to curl up with it, 
then we'll pull it up and hug it. But we're going to carry the ball a lot right here in our right here in our chest. Get your hands past halfway, all right? So you got to hold the football in a good grip. And whenever you ride the ball back, you're reaching to ride the ball up into the line of scrimmage. You can set the back of the hand and his forearm on that on the, on the belly and, the, and shoulder pads of that dive back, and reach back and bend your knees and ride him up. All right. And whenever you reach this foot here, we need to make a decision by then. But we're going to pull the ball and we're going to leave it. If you're going to leave it, just slip that hand off and push the ball in there with the other hand. Make sure he's got a hold of it. All right. If you're going to pull it there, jerk it out. Give him a quick jerk, just a quick jerk, or pull it back and then pull the ball and get it back in the chest. All right. Those are things that are simple, I think, and uh, you've got to do that right. If you try to hand the football off like this, you're going to drop it. You can't pull it out. You'll leave it laying on the ground. So we get it past midpoint there where you make sure that you're able to get a hold of the ball and the hands don't slip off of it. Okay? Now then, uh, other things that we, we interested in doing, we're doing five-step drop on our, our drop back passes, and that's a normal thing that we always do. I want my quarterbacks to take the snap and set the ball in their chest immediately on that first step. All right, and we teach our kids, I know it's up to everybody's own preference. Some of them like the ball set up here where it's ready to throw. We're going to set the thing in our chest here, all right? And then we're going to drop back and set up, and we want the ball left in our chest until we're ready to throw it, and then we're going to step and throw the ball very quickly like everybody teaches quarterbacks to do. There's no secrets as far as that's concerned. We do throw one pass where we're going to make quick reads off of something, and oftentimes against halves coverage, and, uh, and we're going to do a week out and we can back out. We have a hard time doing that if you're not a big, strong kid. Our little quarterbacks have some trouble with that, and that's just a rhythm of one, two, three, plant the back foot and throw it, all right? And uh, I know a lot of you run, run and shoot and stuff, get it off very quickly like that, just a little quick three-step drop and throw. But we're not going to turn our shoulders on that three steps and throw. We're going to back out right here where I can throw this sideline or that sideline and get the ball in the air very quickly in that direction, all right? So we allow ours to back out on that one pass play. That's the only time we back out. The rest of the time, we want the ball ridden up on play action passes, ride the ball on your counter dive fake, all right? Or it's on the outside beer fake, we're gonna tag the guy on the hip. You won't be able to ride him up because he's having to block the end out there, all right? But make that, we want the ball pulled back and set in your chest. We feel like we're gonna get hit in the back once in a while throwing the football and we don't want it up here to do that or somebody to slap it out of our hands. We want to set it in our chest here. All right? Now then, when we get our uh, our stuff that we were uh, talking about on the pitch and stuff, we, we can pitch the ball from our chest and then we're going to just turn and flick it. All right? Extend the arm as we extend the arm. As we get ready to pitch, we step toward the pitch man and we tell our pitch man to stay six yards away from the quarterback. Because when the quarterback steps, he cuts it to five, and he reaches, he cuts it to four. All right? So we want to take that thing and step and pitch the football and watch him catch it. If you're going right at that end and he's going to hit you, then we, we want to step that way right there and try to take that helmet and shoulder pads up here in the shoulder pads rather than right in the face. And we'll tell our kids, step and pitch the ball. Get that shoulder here and, and even lay back if that guy's attacking you hard. Fall back. You're going to take a lot of hits. You're not a sissy because you're leaning back to pitch the football. But lay it out there, you know, and uh, don't give it to him too hot. you got to give it to him where he can catch the football. Give him a chance to catch the ball. Okay? Those are things that are, uh, we feel like are important in, in quarterback fundamentals. Uh, every quarterback's different. Uh, I probably have a tendency most of the time with the the kind of personalities that we have at quarterback when we don't do a lot of yelling and hollering at the quarterbacks. And when we get on to them and we're going to correct them, but we're going to be try to be positive certainly in that. And, and uh, the youngster's got a lot of responsibility out there and he's got a lot of things wrong. He's going to miss some reads and that's okay. He'll make something happen. Give him an opportunity. Make it simple for him. All right? And I think that's the, the thing that we do. We've talked in our other video and we talked about uh, reads and stuff to the quarterbacks. Uh, don't tell him a lot of ifs and ends. All right? Tell him on the ride. We're riding the ball up. The guy, we're going to hand the football unless the guy's coming down hard. He's coming down hard, pull it. All right? Hand the ball unless he's closing hard. Okay? It's that one simple statement there, and I think that helps a lot. All right. 
in some of these things up, I think the thing that the number one thing you need to do is start with your young people and you say, well, you can't run the beer in the seventh grade or eighth grade. We do. You know, we don't run much. We don't run many plays. You know, we go into a seventh or eighth grade ball game, then we, uh, <coughs> we don't run but usually a, a four or five plays. And I'll show you right quickly, uh, just briefly, what we're going to do there. We're going to run. And we set in one formation a lot of time. We don't flip formation. We line up our what our right formation, that double patch with a flanker over here. All right. And I'll tell you what we run out of that. And that's that's it. We run seventh and eighth grade, and we're running it just like that. And we're going to run the counter dive to this side. All right. And we're going to run outside veer to that side, and we're going to run load option to that side. All right, and over here on this side, we're going, we're going to go this direction with a the play. Then we're going to run counter dive, and we're going to run outside veer, and we're going to run load option. And that's all we run in quarterback sneak. All right, so we're going into the ball game with seven running plays, and we try to find three little pass plays that we think we can complete. All right, so we're going into every junior high football game with about ten plays. That's our philosophy is that you don't have to win the junior high football games. You need to teach them how to play football down there. And uh, we want techniques taught the best you can. You're going to have to simplify some things, teach them to zone step. Once they learn to zone step, then you progress a little bit further. And we want our young kids doing that. And certainly if you have an opportunity to, to uh, have your junior high doing the same thing your high school is doing, make it simple for them, teach them fundamentals, teach them what those seven or eight plays are about, and what they're trying to accomplish on those things and see that they do the little things correct. I, I always try to have, uh, with our 7th and 8th grade combined out there, we try to put five coaches out there with them, and uh, myself included. I take me and the first assistant, my defensive coordinator, and we're going to go over and coach at junior high because we're going to want them to be fundamentally sound. And when they get into high school, then they know what we're talking about. They know what to expect from us. and. Uh, and how we want to coach things and what what we're trying to accomplish. Okay, so limit the number of plays. We limit the number of plays in our junior varsity level. All right, and we don't try to run everything that we're running on the varsity. We'll cut that down. We may not run many more plays than what I grew up there for junior high. We want to run a, a, a very simple number of plays and, and give our youngsters a chance to execute. We feel like that you win football games by execution, not how many plays you can run. And uh, that's just our philosophy on it, and that's the way we're going to approach the thing and try to try to uh, accomplish uh, our goals here as, as an offensive football team. Uh, that pretty well concludes my presentation on uh, on offensive beer techniques. If I can answer any questions for you, I'd certainly be glad to do that. I've had several call on on my other tape, and I've tried to. Uh, Try to show you anything. Be glad to tell you anything about my playbook or anything. There's not any secrets in there. The people that I play, they know that I'm going to run the same thing year after year, and I change very little. And uh, anything that you can add to that, or, or a spot in here that'll help you, and and uh, deciding what you might want to do with your offense. Well, I hope that you've uh, uh, gotten something out of it. If you'd like to get in touch with me, you could probably uh, reach me at that uh, address there. Just uh, Gary Reeves, Box Seven, Bells, Texas. 75414 and the school phone number there 903 area code 903 965-4831 and uh, if there's something I can help you with well uh, I'd enjoy talking with you enjoy talking football and talking offensive football with with anyone and uh, and I hope that I've been some help on this hey, we're going to give you a look at uh, a couple of series here against a couple of good football teams that we played during the year. There's a couple of drives that we made. This against a team that you can notice there's a pretty well basically a uh, gap front defensively. So we're basically just having to go zone step or block down at times too and work our head upfield. And uh, our youngster did a great job. It's a quality football team here. Kind of turned our year around this year. Or we'd have been in, probably in trouble. Uh, played very well against this group. You can see we'd run outside beer and counter dive, and we'd come back this outside beer strong, we just cut it back. And it's outside beer weak. Uh, on the dive play there, we'll go with a 
counter dive is strong here coming this way on the counter dive. We get a penalty on this, have to back it up, run it down there really close and uh, get a penalty and have to back ourselves out and try again. But we come right back with the counter dive again and pick up a few yards and uh, you just have to see that we, in our situation here now, we're having to work these young people here. Just, uh, we don't know what kind of front they're going to be in. They fill the gaps, they stunt, they pull out, and, and they're pretty difficult to block. Here we're going to go unbalanced and throw the ball over the secondary man's head, make a good catch in there for a touchdown off of a counter dive pass. Yes, yeah, another series here with another against, against another good football team we had to play against. They're playing more of a 50 front look here. Uh, that's outside very strong. We just had to hit that up a little bit tighter than what we'd like to have. We'll do that sometimes. Uh, we come back here to counter dive again now. This is just right up the pipe. Make a good job of blocking up front. Our youngsters really did a good job. I think the main thing about our offense is if we and our offensive line this year, too. We weren't as talented in a lot of places, but we really come off the ball really well and uh, attacked upfield. There's uh, outside very strong, and you can see the defensive end just kind of standing there. You want to give the football on that. We have an opportunity here. We feel like to open up and try to throw the ball a little bit deep. They're crowding us up a little tight, so we're going to try to throw the flanker out here on just on a go route. And, and uh, probably that's a well-thrown ball. Probably should have caught that. Uh, sometimes they don't pay too much attention to us right in the middle. They, they pay attention to us off tackle, so we go quarterback sneak here. It's a good job of offensive lineman coming up field on that. This will be a standard set here for us, and we're going to run outside beer weak. It's this running back had a great acceleration there. He's, he's quick as a cat. He had about 1,700 yards rushing this year. Had a penalty on that, but uh, we're going to split the end out and run the outside very again over there. Uh, we don't do that very often, but sometimes we do. We felt like we still had this. We're going to change the formation a little bit, go unbalanced, and uh, run outside very weak again. So it's a pretty good job of split end blocking down there and getting some, clearing some way out for us there on a the doodad block. And we come back outside very strong, this unbalanced set, and outside very strong. And see, we kind of just seal everybody up inside. Do a good job of getting it up the field then. Had pretty good success with the unbalanced set here. And we'll do that again here and just run counter dive strong. We just need to slip outside a little bit. We had them blocked there, I believe. We just got in there and got too tight. We probably should have spun and and slipped off outside. Outside very strong. Good job right there with the fullback, making a good cut. And that's not a, uh, a kid with a great deal of speed, but he, he slammed it straight up the field real well, and was certainly successful because of it. Try to load option down here on the goal line, and uh, just slip a little bit and didn't get it quite in the end zone. And uh, we got it down there just a couple of inches away, so we're gonna, a lot of times we're gonna run quarterback sneak in that situation and uh, they just slam it up in there and we were able to push it over, pretty safe play. So just second down. I'll tell you one other series here. This is a playoff game that we played in this year and, and uh, of course there's outside beer on the first play and, and uh, in this ball game, we're playing a great football team. It wore us out pretty good, but I'm gonna show you kind of some things that we kind of do when, whenever we're having to, to scrap a little bit. There's a draw to tailback and and we're well behind in this football game, and it's toward the end of the ball game. We're trying to, trying to work the ball down the field and score. We have a pass play coming up here. We're going to fake counter dive to one side and throw back to split end to have an unbalanced set, and that's a good pass, good catch, and a good run. A kid right there is a good, tough youngster. We're going to still try to do some of our basic stuff. We're going to counter dive up in there. It's a great defensive football team in the state semifinals, and uh, they're hard to run against. Really difficult for us in this ball game to try to get something going. We didn't play very well and turned the ball over a lot, but 
I think you see, get an idea maybe sometimes of things that, that don't go very well. Sometimes uh, you have to, to use another part of your offense and uh, the passing game or whatever it may be, and, and you just have to diversify enough. And you can do that, I think, out of your offense and some things we can do. Here we'd like to throw strong, but we find a curl open back over the middle there out of the backside end and able to throw it hit downfield and hit him with it. And then we're going to come back here with a – with a lead option, you know, we see something wrong or have to use timeout and we get a lead option, get a good cut up inside there and working it down around the 10-yard line. It's a game again and we had to scramble in pretty good. Uh, here we're going to throw back to the curl again. It's just a regular drop back pass. We're drifting a little bit. Shouldn't do that all right, but it's a good throw getting the ball inside on them. Having to stop the clock, not much time left in the ball game. I uh, want to make sure we had an opportunity here to score in this situation. Quarterback sneak, you know, and we that's good to line surge by our offensive people and a good job on quarterback just ramming it up in there. Same thing, we've come right back to it again, and we scored on that play. And, and uh, you know, it's an offense that we're real proud of, and uh, we appreciate the opportunity to try to share some of our information with you.